in the living room. He tugs a thick black blanket from off the back of the couch and pulls up the rug in the center of the room. Beneath it is a trap door. What the hell is... Be quiet! His movements are quick and panicky, but also methodical. His jaw is set and his eyes are hard as he unbolts the trap door, gives it a hard yank to loosen it, and props it open. Beneath it is a rectangular pit in the foundations of the house, the size and shape of a shallow grave. This isn't the first time he's done this. You doubt it's even a tenth. So far Karka has struck you as a little bit ridiculous, but now there's something fierce burning in him, something angry and distilled. The sound comes again, closer this time, and you see a hulking shadow out the window, huge and menacing and armored. Karka yanks you down into the pit with him and wraps the two of you in the blanket. Then he closes the trap door, and you are plunged into a darkness so absolute, it's like you've stopped existing. What the hell's going on? A drone. I, did, I thought the drones don't go into houses. Karka's face is squished against your shoulder. The fear in his voice shudders you to your bones. It's just a routine check. We should be fine down here. My... My Lucis dug this. It hides the temperature. The temperature? Of me. Of us. Of our mutation. What the heck was that? <laughs> I feel like this is new info. Of the whole temperature thing. You don't understand. But that doesn't stop you from being afraid. And possibly heavy footsteps land on the floor above you. Karkat trembles. God, you have to do something. Really? Well, I'm always trying to get my character killed, so I'm gonna try to flee. <laughs> so you're pretty tolerant. So you're a pretty tolerant kind of dude. You're generally down for whatever. But lying in a shallow grave while a troll boy digs his nubby little horns into your ribs, and a mechanical monster stomps around upstairs. That's kind of a lot, even for you. So you do really the only thing a responsible friend can. You get your friend the fuck out of dodge. Oh, I forgot I had to teleport though. Okay, we're going here, huh? All right. It was really cool of Jay to have us all over. Okay, how'd you guys get home? Because I think I left you there. It felt like a birthday present, kind of. Especially since all of my other presents got lost in the mail. Actually, the only one that didn't get lost was a little monster's poser. Is that supposed to be poster or what? Poster my dad got for me? He gave it to me a week early, almost like he knew that something weird was going to happen to the rest of my gifts. Sure, yeah, I'm happy for you, dude. Cool that your dad got your unbelievably crappy shit to you before it got thrown in the literal garbage where, frankly, it belongs? But why are you wasting any part of our valuable word count babbling about your fucking little monster poster? Who actually cares? I don't know, I just figured some people might want to know about it. Whack. <laughs> like people from the other side of the screen. Oh hey, Dave and John are propped up on the futon, gaming the way only bros can game, i.e. with several bags of chips and a mostly empty 2 liter bottle of Mountain Dew on the couch between them. Yeah, dog saving room for Jesus' and snacks. Oh hey, Mr. Mailman. You wave hello and try to catch your breath. You're a little unbalanced from the brutal shift between being buried alive to a chill Texas day with just a couple of guys being dudes Wait, how did they even get back from Jay's? That's what I'm saying, man! Oh, right, yeah, turns out her dog can teleport. Well... How... how did he know, like, so accurately? Wow, right? Who knew? I don't think Beck can time travel, though. So don't worry, you aren't going to be out of a job or anything. Okay, but yeah, now that you're here, how are you going to get back to your house? And I'm probably going to ask you to zap me back to my place before my dad realizes I've been gone this long. Well, what if I never came back? How, how are we going to zap yourself back, okay? Some, some flaws in this plan here. I don't think he called the cops on you, but I just want to be on the safe side. By the way, who the fuck is that? And is he like... Okay? Oh yeah, car cat. He's currently curled up on the ground with a blanket still wrapped around him. He's breathing very heavily and sort of clutching at the carpet. You lean down to make sure he's cool while telling Dave and John that he's an alien from another planet. You figure you bring him here since shit got a little too hot back in alien land. Oh. Dope, I guess. Hey, dude. Wait. He's an alien? Like, a real alien? Yeah, John, Jesus Christ. Look, he's got little horns. Uh, yeah, I can see that, but come on, aliens. Oh, so this is where you draw the line? 
a friend living alone on an island with nothing but her magical dog and taxidermied grandpa who she stuffed herself? Is it where you draw it? A teleporting fake mailman in a hoodie who just wants to be bros? Is it where you draw it? I guess you have a point. All this stuff just feels so normal now. So I guess in theory, you could bring us to visit this alien planet. Maybe. Not that that's anything I actually want to do, the place is probably stank AF. You never catch me in space. Space ain't the place. Oh damn, write that down. You love a good Strider freestyle any day of the week? But this isn't Dave's route, so you return your focus back to- Oh holy fuck, where do you go? Oh yeah, the little dude just scurried out the door. Probably should have mentioned that. God damn it. You just brought Karka to Earth and you've already lost them. Some friend you are. You zap down to the ground floor of the apartment building. Nothing. You zap to the stairwell and look up. Nothing. No alien, no little alien boy with blanket. Shit, damn it. Remembering the time you met Dave, you zap up to the roof. Okay, but how'd he get up there so fast? He only has his legs. You find Karka standing silhouetted against the turgid Texas sky, shivers of heat haze making him look strangely artificial. He's shading his eyes and staring up at the sun. Hey dude, don't do that, you're going to hurt yourself. Oh wow, thank you so much for the advice, I'm way too stupid to know not to look directly into a burning ball of fire. This pain is intense and searing, but I'm just a dumb fucking animal. By the way, this sun is pathetic. Well, this is another planet and another sun. Yes, thank you. He drops his hand and turns his and turns back to you. There are still cobwebs in his hair from the cross base. Is this where you're from? You think so? Maybe? You don't remember very much about yourself, but you seem to know much more about Earth than you do about Alternia. You don't remember very much about that place at all. Oh, except that it's called Alternia, apparently. This all feels... I don't know wrong? Or just really fucking weird? It's definitely both. You zap in and drag me out of my hive? To an alien planet where the sun isn't hot enough to burn? Well, it is definitely hot enough to burn. It just takes a little longer. Shut up, I wasn't finished. Before you showed up, Solix was telling me about this game that one of his friends found. We we're all supposed to play together and... I don't know. Some stuff would have happened? I don't know why it feels like that matters. I just feel... It's hard to describe. Flatten out. Yeah, I feel you. You and Karka both jump. Dave has ninja up the stairs and leaned casually against the brick wall. Shit, how long has he been standing there? And where's John? Oh, he just disappeared. Wait, what? Yeah, it's weird. This swirly void wormhole just opened up in the TV and sucked him right in. And that's... Totally normal for you? You're just cool? What? Love fucking with you. Ah, uh, classic Dave. John's in the bathroom. But I had you for a second, didn't I? Absolutely sounds like something that could happen these past couple of days. Oh yeah, hilarious. He sure got you. Also, you're pretty sure the scene moved up here so you could talk to Carcat without Dave coming in and making all of this about him again? Look, Dave just needs to hang with people, you know? He's very lonely. Dave adjusts his shades. Man, that is just an extremely weird thing to say. But yeah, horny dude. I mean, uh, guy with horns. Are you talking to me? We were all supposed to play a game too. Together as a group or some shit. Right, Jade told you about a game. A game that was supposed to change everything. It's that sort of shit that makes me get this feeling. You know more about what's going on than you're telling us. You don't. You swear you don't. You have no idea why any of this is happening. Or maybe... not happening? There's just some stuff you seem to know, but not until you absolutely have to. You're just sure that it's very important that you brought Carcat here. Why? For plot reasons, man. How the fuck do I have anything to do with these whoreless freaks? Standing right here, bro, oh my god. But yeah, that's a pretty good point now that I think about it. You said it's important for you to bring him here, like here specifically, to my apartment. Yeah. Why? You aren't sure? You just have this intense feeling that it's imperative that the two of them are friends. Alright. Weird, but alright. Grey dude, you ever play any Tony Hawk? And they just spent the time playing Tony Hawk. <laughs> 
victory! Look how absolutely pissed off he looks. This is hilarious. I feel like after this, I should check the credits for this route because I, I like this background music. All right, instead of taking our sweet time, which didn't kill us, I guess we can zap right over. No point in wasting daylight or moonlight, whatever. So you just zap out over there. Holy fuck. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> a flash of gray and a gleam of metal. Bright, shocking pain opens up in the middle of you. The boy stares, eyes round, yellow and shocked. Your laugh comes out wet. Why are you laughing? You don't know what else to do. You press a hand to the wound in your stomach, trying to hold the blood in with sheer willpower. You tell him you were just trying to save a little time. What? The boy stares down at the weapon in his hand, a viciously hooked blade that he pulled seemingly out of nowhere. A scythe? No, a sickle. Is this kid a communist? Did communists actually use sickles? Or were they just sickle themed? There's so many communist facts that you don't know. The boy continues to stare at a sickle. Then he stares at your fingers. He looks back and forth. His sickle, your fingers. His sickle, your fingers. Or more accurately, the blood on his sickle and your fingers. He's gaping at the crimson splashes like he's never seen blood before. His mouth moves, but no sound comes out. He hunches over himself like he is the one who has been gutted. You aren't sure what he does after that, because suddenly you're on your back and all you can see is the sky. Man, the routes never go how I expect them to go. So what, I didn't die, right? But he just slashed my arm or something? Or maybe I died, I don't know, it's hard to tell. Alright, time to wait out and die again, I guess. Everything leads to death when it's not the good route. We'll be fine. Carcat mutters it to himself again and again. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. This always works. There's no reason to... A rusty grating screech as the trapdoor is wrenched off its hinges. Light pours in. Two giant metal hands reach into the hole and pluck the both of you out. Carcat wriggles and bites like a cat trying to get free. You don't have the chance. The drone tosses you bodily out of the way. Your head hits the wall. And everything goes a little strange and streaky after that. You're okay? When you come back to yourself, you're outside in the blazing morning heat with Carcat crouched over you. Did... Did the two of you escape? Yeah, well his house isn't doing too well. His voice is hollow. There's crimson blood smeared on his sweater and up to his chin. And you realize it must have come from the reopened cuts on your arm. Carcat must have carried you out of the hive. The hive? Behind you, Carcat's house is in flames. The heat of the fire combines with the heat of the sun, until it feels like the two of you are standing on the edge of hell. Oh my god. Did the drone do that? No. My Lucis did. Why? I told you, I have early warning systems? He gave me a chance to get out before triggering it. Your, your warning system is to set your house on fire. Is he... Is he okay? Carcat gives you a look of utter disgust. He gestures toward the burning hive. I very much fucking doubt it. Okay, okay. But the drone is dead, right? So he's safe. Carcat releases a creaky, wheezing sound that it takes you a second to realize is a laugh. God, you really are an alien. Where are you even from? It sounds so relaxing. That isn't the only drone, you freak of nature! It's seen my sign! It's heard my voice. I'm on record as co on sight? There's absolutely nowhere for me to go. Shit. Okay, well, what about his friends? You really don't think Karkat is in any sort of state to make decisions, so you make an executive one for both of you. Also, it's hot as shit out here, and your delicate skin is already starting to burn. Where had that friend's name- what had that friend's name been? Sulks? You take Karkat's hand because the two of you are beyond holding each other under the armpits at this point. You appear in a residential street in a city, and for a second you think you must have traveled in time as well since it's night ag again suddenly. But then you look up and see the strange purple slash blue glimmer in the sky. It's still day, but there's some sort of atmospheric shield between the killer sun and the city. You wonder why there isn't one over where Carcat lives. Maybe it's too far out of the sticks. Okay, this is clearly a background from Friend Sim, I think. So did you travel back in time? Carcat yanks his hand out of yours. He is still holding the blanket he wrapped the two of you in staring around in nervous little ticks. He looks even more scared than he had back in his bedroom. Clearly, he doesn't get out much. Fuck. A little chime rings out through the empty street. Karkat pulls his palm husk out of his pocket 
and looks at it like he can't remember what it is. Like everything normal has been wiped away, and all that remains is the frozen horror in his eyes. KK, what the fuck? I just saw your name come up on the feeds. What did you do, you fucking idiot? You're gonna be the the you're gonna be a thrush executioner? You can't just start showing up on cult list. I didn't do anything, sucks. I there's some stuff about me you don't know. KK, what the hell? Okay, well, first of all, I'm right outside your hive stem. Oh, this is still Alternia? Okay. What? What are you talking about? Is this the mutant stuff? What? Is this the mutant stuff who gives a shit about that? Oh my god, I can't read your stuff. What's TZ? To know? I know- I don't fucking know what that is. TZ? No- oh, like Terezi or something? No, wait, that's not Terezi. Who's TZ? TZ knows too? She says she can taste our blood color through the screen, which is all kinds of freaky. How does that even work? The screens aren't scratched and sniffed. How the fuck that is Terezi? Why do you call her TZ? Weird. It doesn't matter. Wow, I actually do not give a crap about any of Terezi's cackling bullshit right now. Everybody is fucked forever. As if in agreement, a familiar crackling word starts up somewhere close by. You and Karkat look at each other in almost comedic distress. I... I have to go. Just come up here, okay? We'll figure this shit out. No, absolutely fucking not. Oh my god. You utter imbecile? You think your little pan sparks could do anything against a choline drone? I know you have a death wish, but I'm not going to assist you in a hysterical shit fit suicide. You don't know anything about me or my death wish, KK. Come upstairs. No. Don't let me tell you how much I hate you. Karkat throws his palm husk at the pavement, shattering the screen. Tears drip off his jaw in blurry streaks of red. Your tears are red too? I thought it was on your blood. Get me out of here. And don't you dare ask me what, what's, what's wrong. You don't. You get him out of there. To all over. Locale to locale. These are all the freaking places from the previous game. You take a grand tour of Alternia, a place you shouldn't know the name of, but you do. And everywhere you go. You hear that telltale grating whir. Karkat was right. Wherever he goes, the drones follow. After a certain point, it just becomes routine. You teleport to a random location, and the two of you just sort of loaf around until you hear the sound in the distance. By the time the sun starts to set, you are both exhausted and must have zapped all over the planet. You find yourself back on the grassy fields, most likely somewhere near Karkat's demolished hive, Smoke hangs fed up in the e evening air. Karkat's eyes are dull, his hair a tangled mass of curls so thick they look like twisted wire. I figured out why the fucking thing didn't work. What thing? He shakes the blanket, which he's been holding onto all day, the last remnant of what is most likely by now just a smoking wreck. With two mutants in there, we were too warm. Years of perfecting my hiding like an oink beast from the slaughter technique? And it's all decimated by some clueless asshole in a hoodie. Just Karkat out here having it a normal one. Getting fucked up the way shoot by the inexorable march of fate and the universe? I meet someone with the same disgusting deformity as me, and they immediately ruin my life. This is why I don't let people into my hive. Karkat. There's so much hatred wrapped up in his voice, and his words. And you don't think it's hatred for you. You ask him what you can do. You want to fix this. I think you've done enough. Karkat bundles himself up in the blanket, even though it isn't cold. He turns away. Game over. Okay, freaky and absolutely harsh. Okay, let's me check. How do I check it again? Uh, credits. I just want to see. Where is it? Um, musicians. I guess it's just. Oh, is this one maybe? Carcass theme, Crustacean, by James Roach. All right, well, that's that for volume five, route one, Mr. Carcat. Expedited shipping, you brought Carcat to meet some new friends. Napetta would be proud. Ah, uh, well, that's good, okay. So that's that for that, and then the next one, we're gonna befriend Kanaya and have some tentacle therapy, apparently. That's worrying. Jesus, fuck, think of the body. Think of the fucking body. Pick up the fucking body! Knock knock. 